Org live coding session. Code Buddies is a global community of amazing people who help each other become better at software development through conversations on Slack and peer to peer organized study groups and virtual hangouts. This is a live coding session, so there will be more head scratching than actual answers. This is not a tutorial, be forewarned. Um, I have been trying to summarize these videos um, after the fact. I will probably produce a summary of this video, um, but generally if it says coding or live code, uh, it's just me working out uh, how things, how to do certain things, and if it says uh, summary, then it's going to describe the exact changes I made at the during the session or at the end of the session. So that said, what we're working on today is um, a dynamic registration form. We have an event, an annual session, and we want people to register online. And basically, we want the form fields uh, to be visible depending on other the state of other fields. So we have this age field, and when somebody enters their age, let's say 33, they should only see accommodation options that are relevant to their age group. So I was thinking we'll start there. And then um, at another point, we'll work on just toggling the visibility of the whole overnight accommodation field and days of attending field uh, based on um, whether or not they're planning on staying overnight or multiple days and things like that. But I want to get the basic pattern um, out of the way. So what we've done in, in the previous, previous session was to create this list of accommodation options and the, each option has some data attached to it. So the age minimum and the age max are attributes on each of these accommodation options. So before we get started, I'm going to grab a little bit of tea. So it's worth mentioning that these are called day attender fees. Essentially, or I'm sorry, accommodation fees, excuse me. They're slightly different than the day attender fees. Accommodations are for people who are staying overnight and need um, particular accommodations, so either camping or a dorm room, a bed in a dorm room, or semi-private accommodations. So this is what we've been working on, these accommodation fees. Hey, what's up, Level 2? Welcome to the stream. It's going into, Level 2 is going into lurk mode. We're going to be doing some JavaScript today, Level 2. So we'll see how rusty I am and how much I need to learn. I need to learn quite a lot. But uh, I was thinking about using jQuery to keep things simple and consistent cross-browser, and it's been around for a while, 14 years, I think. So let's let's dive into it. Um, we should already have jQuery available here. Oops. It's a function. Yeah. Three point three point one, which is the latest release. <clears throat> and we'll just go ahead and go through the documentation. So what I want to do is attach an event listener. Our change event dot change. So essentially I want to select this age field here. <clears throat> I 
let's just try something basic. That works. So now we've got the right element. And essentially when that changes, scratch pad here I don't know I have to learn about the uh, Chrome or Firefox hey what's up adrenaline 681 welcome to the live stream have you done any work with JavaScript or are you interested in web development so I would like to know if there's a skip scratch pad here I can just kind of do multiple lines on Journalin says, been learning JavaScript for the last couple of months. Okay, cool. What are you, what type of uh, project are you wanting to build? It's more, uh, you're more proficient in Python. Yeah, me too. I actually uh, use Python on a daily basis at work. Still have a lot to learn, but it's a good language. All right, so we'll have a function here and it gets the event. So what I'm gonna do is just see if this will work. Uh, change, this should be singular change, right? All right, ooh, it's changing a lot. <laughs> That's kind of weird, all right. Adrenaline right. says, trying to learn more about web development. Learned Django in the past, but keep hearing that React is the way to go for web development phone apps. All right, well, I'm not gonna argue with that. It's a very common uh, development tool. Uh, but I think there's a lot of nuance to it. So it depends on what you're wanting to do. And web development alone is quite a big field. And uh, I think React is overkill for a large uh, majority of web development projects to get started with at least. Um, but it depends on what kind of, I use Python for data analysis. Usually we're working um, with some various uh, analytic reports and uh, moving data between systems or processing it getting it out of S3 buckets, putting it in a Postgres database, uh, things like that, transformations, a um, little bit of geographic stuff, uh, geographic information systems. Okay, so the first thing I noticed, this change method is going crazy. It's firing all the time. Why is it firing so much? What about key up? Maybe that's a little bit better. <laughs> key up. Let's go ahead and refresh this page. Yeah, what kind of stuff have you been building with Python and drilling? Uh, so instead of on, instead of change, we're just going to do on. <laughs> What's the event name? Key up. I'm just guessing here. And then the function. Journal says, been using Python at work to do to create automation tools for VFX and animation. Ah, oh, very cool. Sounds good. Have you been working with Blender at all? It's Blender's written, um, well, at least it has uh, all of its plugins and API are in Python. I don't know. I think underneath uh, things are built with like C++ or something. But yeah, everything in uh, sort of user space you, you can modify with, with Python. And it does a lot of uh, video effects. on change handler yeah it looks like we use maya and other software which all have python integration yeah cool maya i remember working with maya a few years back a little bit 
but that's not my domain. And I have, uh, well, I don't have a lot of expertise, but I have a bias for, for Blender, <laughs> just because it's really cool. All right, so event, form event. I think key up is going to be the right one. It's not going out of control now. We got our event. Uh, well, there's one problem though. If you <laughs> change the event with these arrows, if you change it with the arrows, it's not going to work. Which is why I wanted to use the change. Because you know, I was typing the age. Man, well, it's already. Hmm. Well, what if I just do. Why would that have been going crazy like that? On change. Hide the arrows. Yeah, that's a good. Uh, I'm not even writing the markup for this um, for this form. It's auto generated by Django, and I think the browser actually <coughs> picks the widget based on the field type when you tell it its uh, type number, <coughs> which Django does by default because it's a, it needs to be uh, a number input. We can't have people inputting you know spelling out their age or something like that in letters, whoops. So yeah, a little bit, <laughs> a little bit of challenge here. So let's, let's say on and then try this change. Change is the right, the right event. It's just going crazy in the browser. Why is that? And I might just do this with, with vanilla JavaScript. And look at that, look how many times that's being called. Can you see that little number? Yeah, going up and up and up and up. Hmm. All right. Well, let's just do vanilla JavaScript. So JavaScript. Let's get how to unchange. There's jQuery. But that one's going crazy. All right. So our, <coughs> our query selector will be get element by ID. Add event listener change. Yes, thanks. I'll do that. So first I grab the element here. So I'll say, um, what is it? AMV age field. The element by ID, and I think it was uh, ID age. This is automatically generated by uh, undefined. Yes, this is the age field. Look at that, it even hi uh, highlights it. That's cool. <laughs> All right, so then you said, adrenaline says, um, yep, get out, talk to me, get out in my ID, my ID, and then add event listener. All right, so then I'll say age field dot add event listener uh, change to the event name. And then there's the second argument, the function. And then event. I'm just gonna get my parentheses uh, and brackets matching and then semicolon. I think it should just be console log. And can I do, yes, line breaks. Target mm, value I think is what I'm after. Total guess though. All right, now if I come down here and run, execute that. <clears throat> so there we go. Now it's not going crazy. Using a browser, browser native API. 
uh, Java, like platform native API, I suppose it would be called. I like that a little bit better. I'm surprised that jQuery uh, had that issue with just running that thing over and over and over again. It's very strange. Level two says Python is sexy. Yeah, what have you uh, been building with Python? Anything, uh, any cool project lately? Level two. <laughs> so let's see, 42. Ah, then I need to sort of also need the key up, but there it goes, it changed. Hmm. This will be a little bit of a challenge. I'll probably still want the key up event. So what I'll do is when I get to writing the code, I'll wrap this function, you know, just define it outside of the scope of the event listener uh, definitions. And then I'll use it both on the change event and the key up event. <coughs> That way the fields will be responsive to user change. And I have looked, I've considered using a declarative um, component, front end component library like React or Vue or Aurelia for this. I think it's overkill for this project. Even the lighter weight ones. I do like the idea of progressive enhancement that you can do with uh, Vue and Light DOM. You can kind of drop it in just like jQuery, drop it into a page and then add your dynamic <clears throat> aspects. But this still, Vue still wants you to kind of manage the data uh, in JavaScript. And I have my data right now in HTML. Just, I'm not f you know, following conventions so much. Level two says, trying to finish up this extension. The mad thing is that. I was finished, but then I thought about some more features to add, and now I'm finishing up that. Yeah, those features can add up. That's why we have that phrase, feature creep. Like meaning that they, they creep up on you and they surprise you. You're like, oh no, another feature? And particularly, you can work in companies and realize you're in a feature factory. They, the company might not have a clear vision uh, and it just comes up with a lot of ideas and says, oh yeah, let's add that to our software, let's add that to our software. I was working at a feature factory a couple of years ago and uh, it was not a very healthy environment, a lot for a lot of reasons, but uh, anyway. Uh, Drillin says, do you want the event to trigger as the user types? I'm thinking it should almost because I don't know if it'll be a problem later, but um, certain, like the whole lower half of this form is gonna be hidden until um, let me just think for a second. Actually, just this only thing the age is going to toggle right now is these these uh, items here. So it might be okay. Mm. <laughs> Probably should I don't know do it as a type as well. What do you think? Uh, adrenaline is there a way? So input instead of the um, instead of change. So, actually, let's just refresh it. And maybe I'm getting to the point where I need to uh, start uh, not doing this in JavaScript console, but input, let's try the input one. That's a good suggestion. So that will be when they use, oh, yes, sorry. And heck, I could actually just chain these. I realize that, but uh, anyway. So, it is. so when I click the little button, let's clear this. Yeah, that's the input. And when I type, that's the input. Oh, brilliant, adrenaline! Thank you. That's actually really great. <laughs> and yeah. So the fun part, fun now begins. And I'm wondering at what point I need to take this again out of the browser console into the, um, sort of into the page template. Because now I'm gonna start, a couple more experiments I can do though. First, I just say var age equals 29. All right, so we've got 
age. We're just creating a guess, uh, creating a random age. Certainly not my age. And then what I want to do now is filter a bunch of fields. So uh, I was thinking to use jQuery here. I think I should probably use jQuery, but uh, we want to get the person's age from that field. When that field changes, trigger a function that'll show or hide multiple, uh, either show or hide, I'll have to figure out which is more appropriate. Um, they could all start as hidden. They should probably all start as hidden. The problem is it's gotta hide everything. Okay, but let's take one step at a time. The accommodation options should only be relevant to the age, that's the thing. So let's start by just seeing the, if we can hide the, the ones since they're already visible. So you can gray out. Yeah, that's a good idea. I think we're just not having them on there though. It's gonna be a little bit cleaner. Uh, less, less information on the screen, uh, especially less irrelevant information is really good in my opinion. Or make, yeah, make them disabled. Okay, so I should probably do both, particularly if somehow they manage to uh, select one and then change the age. There could be weird, <laughs> weird things like that. Yeah, I don't know. That's a good point, but let's start with just let's start with just uh, filtering a few of them. So, I think jQuery, and maybe the, maybe the DOM. I essentially want to. Yeah, I'm not gonna be able to do it by selector. I have to do it through some filter function that will look at that'll select all of these elements. And the thing is, it's also nested. But all these input elements inside of the overnight accommodations, starting there. So accommodate overnight accommodations. Let's just let's grab that. So we've got. I'm just going to break this down one thing at a time. And I need my. That's actually got to be a hash. And we'll just hide the, uh, well, yeah, of course this will work, right? Because that's just very plain. Yep, so you can see there's the. Now, but what we want to do is we want to hide just the um, inputs. I, think I can do it like that, right? Now that, this is the subtle part. But the, the inputs are actually hidden now. The radio buttons are gone. The label and the, <laughs> the uh, nested part are, are visible. So that's something I probably don't need this to be an, a list, an unordered list when a radio list would work. So let's go ahead and uh, edit this form. Uh, dang it. I'm not controlling the markup. auto-generated markup, hmm. Well. we'll come back to it. I don't want to write the whole markup for this form just yet. I think at some point I'm going to have to cross that bridge. All right, so this selector works. I'm going to filter a subset of them. So you have the age here still. It's 29. So using the jQuery filter.
and you pass in a function. Index an element and it returns a boolean. <clears throat> and what I want to look at is those data properties inside of the function. Braces and new line. Okay, so now I need to. I'm um, gonna grab the attribute, it's a data attribute. I think this is the right. So what I'll say is, um, that age minimum so and an age maximum so the attribute would be And what I'm going to do is return, I have to figure out if I'm doing a positive or the negative selection here. So if I'm going to do, I'm going to select either the ones that are appropriate or the relevant ones or the ones that are irrelevant and show or hide them. So what we're trying to do is actually just hide. So we'll select the ones that are not relevant. Sorry, this is just a little bit mind bending. I'm not that great at Boolean logic. So in other words, If the age min is greater than age or age max is less than age, right? I think that's correct. And eligible accommodations. I'm not even sure if I'm spelling that right. Not far. <laughs> I-N-E-L-I-G-I-B-L-E. All right, so grab the ineligible ones so that uh, if the person is too young or too old, too old or too young, age men, Greater than age, so that's too young. Age max is less than age, less than age. Too old in that case, too young on the left, too old on the right. Ah, 
Dag nabbit. So if they're too young or too old, they're inel those are ineligible options. Something like that. Ah, uh, attribute, element attributes, not, okay, so syntax error then, good. At least I know the problem. Hmm, I see. So I need to actually pass these into jQuery. Interesting. It's probably a cleaner way of doing this. If anyone who's familiar with jQuery, or if I can just do it with plain JavaScript, I would like that as well. If there's not gonna be any cross browser compatibility issues. Cause so I have each element here. It seems like I should be able to do that. All right, let's see now. Okay, and now I've got the ineligible, oops. Ineligible accommodations hide. Let's we'll see the length, that's actually a good idea. Got 16 of them. so all of them. Maybe I've got my logic inverted. Wouldn't surprise me if I got my, my logic inverted here, but from what I can tell here, whoops, let's just go ahead and uh, console log those. Register age is less than, I'm just gonna put this in front. I did have my Boolean backwards. So if the register age is less than the minimum, then they're too young. If the register age is greater than the max, they're too old, right? Okay, that is the problem. I have my, uh, my logic backwards. Easy mistake. Uh, so let's just count them. Now it should be less than 16. Huh, still 16, dang. Could be that it's a string. I might need to cast it to an integer. Maybe that's something to do with it. Just check that first. and 12 wait no I'm sorry there's <laughs> 6 and 12 so that was 16 lines 16 times 6 and 12 it did for each of those 
How do I see them all? Hmm. All right, well, whatever. That's, I think, correct. So what are these types? I didn't check the data type in JavaScript. Type of. So it should be number, all right. String string, that's okay. So we need to cast them to integers or numbers. Um, how do you do that in JavaScript? Another numbers. Now I think we should have uh, an eligible combinations length of sixteen still. All right. Now we got them all. False true, false true, false true, false true, false true. So 29 is not too young for any of the combinations, but it's too old for most of them. In fact, this thing thinks it's too old for all of them. Okay, now we're getting somewhere. Greater than or Age max here, for example. in my underlying logic all right they're all 6 through 12 that's why that's why I was logging the same 6 through 12 over and over again all right dang it I struggled with this previously uh, about two hours trying to get these data properties in there okay all right one moment I'm just gonna have to think about this for a second <laughs> I'm gonna take a small break I'll be right back
All right, thanks for sticking with me. I had to change my shirt, it's a little bit hot here too. Okay, so I think the JavaScript is correct now. I think we're looking good. Now I have to take one step back and figure out my Django code. This is, um, so let's see, let me save this in a place where I won't lose it. That's pretty good right there. And it'll go on the registration page and I'll figure it out in a minute, but uh, I'll probably put it in its own file also. I was dealing in a uh, pretty obscure area of Django. Actually, I need to cut this real quick. In other words, not very well documented. Most things I've dealt with in Django have been really well documented. But this one is leaving a lot of guesswork. So let me just comment out all that script. All right, so if anyone here is familiar with Django and particularly how you uh, create custom widgets in Django, I would appreciate some help here, but let's take a look at my code. So what we're dealing with are fees. These, um, where did I deal? No, 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 no. Where did I put these? I thought it was fees. Be a widgets dot pi. Maybe it's accommodations widgets. Hmm. This these are overnight accommodations, but they're actually fees relating to the accommodations. Widgets. Weird. I don't see my my code. Registration widgets. Here it is. Oh, because I. This makes sense. It's on the registration form, so I define the widgets in the re registration form. Okay, cool. Now here's the here's the rub, and uh, this took me two hours to even get this far, and I'm totally uh, in the and, well. It obviously didn't work how I was expecting it. Essentially, I created a custom widget for this form. I'm not writing the form HTML, and I don't mind doing that at some point, but. Uh, you can define custom widgets and assign them to a field. So when I look at this registration form here, the code for it, it's just very basic. It takes a model form because the data goes right into a Django model. And that model is registrant. And basically a registrant is somebody who's gonna attend this event and all the info we wanna collect about them is just in that table. And right now I'm only working with a small sample of it just so I can uh, deal with the core moving parts. I was hoping this would be a lot more straightforward, but it's not. So you can show or hide fields from the model. Um, we want every registrant to be linked to a, a user, a Django user, so that's, uh, but that user shouldn't like select themselves or anything. This has happened on the server side, but here's the important thing. Each of the fields, these are model fields, uh, is rendered in the form automatically based on the data type. So if you recall, this um, age field is, um, you know, it's expecting an integer because it's a number field and the, all the markup is generated uh, automatically and the browser does the um, the widgets so that people can input strings and stuff like that. So that's working correctly. And you can override these widgets in certain cases. Uh, like the days attended, I wanted people to be able to select from a list. Now Django is wrapping those in an unordered list by default. Uh, which might be something I will change later or put them into a list group or something like that. Um, and similarly with overnight accommodations, radio select. I want people to select one from a list and, as opposed to a dropdown. At first I was using a dropdown, but I don't know how to show and hide elements of a dropdown or if you can disable them and they will disappear or what. Uh, that might be a reasonable approach to this as well. In any case, we're, we're using a radio um, select. I'm just kind of giving the backstory briefly here. As, briefly as I can. And the thing is, by default, the only thing that comes into the radio is a label. That label has the, um, essentially the name of the accommodation is string formatted 
text that takes some data and pops it in there that I, I generated this um, string format from the model. Let's just take a quick look there. The register model, so you're going to see the, all the moving parts. I've been working on this for a little bit, so admittedly, this stuff's not obvious or intuitive. Uh, so here's the register model, which is collecting all these data, the first name, last name, age, uh, days attending and overnight accommodation fields, those are all defined here. And they're just classes, so each class, uh, they're Python classes, so you can define this double under or dunder stir method to say, this is how my, uh, sorry, I'm showing you the wrong model, but uh, uh, essentially how my um, model should render. Now here's the, so that's for the registrant, the whole form. This field is actually a foreign key. So I'm actually yeah, getting pretty close here to seeing all the parts. So overnight accommodations is a foreign key to this accommodation fee model. So if I look at accommodation, uh, sorry, excuse me, under the fees, models, accommodation fee, you can see it's a consists of several fields, age min, age max, accommodation, and two types of fees. If you're just attending a few days, you'll pay a little bit more, but if you're attending the whole event, and you'll get a little bit of a discount. And so here's the string formatter. But I need to get at this, this data a little bit to pop it into the DOM. When I render these, these elements out, I wanted to attach it as data fields. Okay, so there we are, that's the whole, that's the whole story about um, why I'm defining a custom widget. And apparently, <laughs> My custom widget is not behaving as I was expecting it to. So let's go ahead and take a look at this overnight accommodation radio select widget. Here it is. The widgets are just things that render in the user interface. It's nothing fancy. You know, if you've used Flutter or something like that, you know, everything's a widget in Flutter. It's similar. And when you basically each of these this radio select is rendering the whole thing, the whole radio select. Uh, but each of these options should be an option within the radio select from what I, that was my understanding of it. So they should all have a primary key. Let's just see that this is varying. When I refresh this page, we should see all the primary keys. Either the same primary key is gonna log one, 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 or it's gonna be like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, because they're they're, inter, uh, they're integers and it's auto incrementing integers by default. That's how Jenga does it. So yeah, we can see they're auto incrementing. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I got 15 accommodation types, 16 actually, because the zeroth one is this placeholder, I think. In any case, This is the part that I should work if, so I need to grab it out of the, oh dude, so noob. <laughs> I was experimenting with it and I just had hard coded the primary key to be one and that's why it's always one. Nice. All right, so let's just, I'll explain this. It took me a while to work this out. For every option in this option list here, um, when we're iterating over them, we'll get this index value, and that index actually corresponds to the primary key for what is an accommodation fee. These are all accommodation fees. Yes, and I want to actually then get that accommodation fee from the database so I can grab a couple of extra data fields from there and pass them back into the, to the DOM, into the UI. Yes. And so that's it. I should have now a unique record from the database based on the index value. And if I refresh the page and wait for things to the server to reload and I can inspect these now. Uh, let's just wand over them. So I got that one, age max 99, age min 26. This one, 
age min 18, age max 25. Okay, now everything is seeming to work correctly. If I hop back over here to my console, I have some log messages. Okay, so I need to grab those overnight accommodations. And actually, maybe just string this whole thing and dig it there together. Oh, darn it, wrong button. Here we go. And uh, pop that there. So we get the overnight accommodation input option, object the elements, I mean, which are just those radio buttons, not the label or anything like that. I'll have to, I'll have to figure this part out next. I think with jQuery, you can traverse the DOM to grab the parent and the parent of the parent. So I can actually show or hide the whole uh, LI. We'll come back to this stuff. And, and uh, I think now we should be good to go though. Oh, dang it. I've got a selector, then I want to filter that selection. Weird. Uh, no, not. Sorry, overnight accommodations. And it's gonna give me a little error because overnight accommodations is not defined, but I'll define it here. Equals, yeah, cool. <sighs> Typed radio. How many of them are there? We're at accommodations length. One. Because it's a node list. All right. Well, whatever. working before different here. I grab all those overnight accommodations prior. Oh. I needed a var there. Hmm. Is there just a vanilla JavaScript way to do this? Oh, could use low dash or something. Hmm. See, I think jQuery is good here because it lets you do something like operations on multiple objects is one of the revelations that jQuery brought. Otherwise I have to iterate over these manually. So. I'll stick with jQuery. I'm trying to keep my requirements minimum and the complexity fairly small. I don't mind doing a little bit of imperative code here. I just gotta work out the moving parts. I don't want a whole build system and reactive front end framework, uh, you know, Webpack and all that just to do a dynamic form. I think that's way overkill. I know that's the kind of default mode that people buy into. This is just a really standard web app form input and that's it's not really like an app app all right so I've got a uh, this filter property from what I see is just part of that so if I just
Hmm. Oh, okay. I think what happened is that there's a problem with my... There's the problem. And I need to actually do this too. Actually, that shouldn't have been a problem. comment this out this will be where I find the script or else I'll include it in the footer uh, I'll import it and have it own JavaScript file perhaps but okay now if I refresh this those errors should go away things should start working um, okay. now, essentially what I want to do is find the one right there so uh, there we go. So we'll grab the overnight accommodations, run that filter function on them, get the age min and age max, parse it as an integer because the strings by default in the DOM. Then do the comparison, too young if your registrant age is less than the minimum, too old if it's greater than the minimum. And we'll return too young or too old. Well, I think this doesn't matter if I have parentheses either. And I need to define age. So let's say 33 is the age. Python. All right, I think we've got it. Dot length, twelve. All right, so there's. Let's hide the ones they're ineligible for. Ooh, yes, it worked good. <clears throat> ah, let me get out of this. One mode. There we go. We can see there's only a few radio buttons. Now the problem being, um, I actually have to hide the parents. <laughs> I'm not sure if the approach I've taken is going to work in that case. Let's take a look at the markup. I'll show you what I mean. The data is embedded on this input. The input is just a little radio button, but it has also a label, and it's in the list item. Everything's in the list item. It's jumping around a bit, but here you go. You got a list item containing a label, containing an input, and the label text. And the only element that's getting hidden is this input. The radio button is disappearing in all these cases, and so what I actually want to do is hide the list item. So I need to go up to parents. So let's go ahead and show those again. I don't know if this is gonna work out, but. might just work if I take now so this is for a specific element if I have a set of elements can I or do I iterate over them let's try it just with just the uh, vectorized approach so to speak <laughs> oh it did work oh good <laughs> Wow. Nice. So 
now I can just take this whole function and wrap it up inside of the what did you, adrenaline said the event listener for the input event when the input changes it'll just rerun this um, the thing is They should start hidden, I think. Okay, so if they start hidden, the page renders. So I have to change my logic. Page renders on render on document ready. I can just just hide them all. So that's no problem. Combination options hide. Then on the event listener, I will just show the ones and hide the ineligible. Only two methods to call from within the event listener. At this point, I'm going to start working in the uh, over here, the IDE. Cool because there's gonna be a lot more moving parts and I'm already kind of at the capacity of my short-term memory to reason about this stuff. All right, so we'll define a few functions. No, this will be just hide, hide accommodation options. And I'm not in Python. <laughs> That's just basically select them and hide them. Yeah, looks good. All right, function show eligible accommodations. Now that's going to take two arguments. Or, no, just one, I think. Double check that. Two. Index and element? No, no. No, no, no. This is the whole thing. So, on the event listener. And then. one function so I'm going to iterate over each index element with this named function I don't know if you need semicolons or I think some people don't use semicolons And I'm going to change the logic in one moment. The other way around, and then document on ready. Well, I'll call it manually just to make sure things are working. Now, let's double check this here. So, I want to hide, I want to find the eligible accommodations. So Uh, 
Oh uh, yeah, so community event. Because we're going to attach this show eligible accommodations to the input event. Yeah, we're good to go. So what did I do? Why are these events to the UI? I think that's good. So you're old enough if your age is greater than or equal to the minimum. And you're young enough if your age is less than or equal to the maximum. Yes. Okay. Let's give myself a little bit of white space here. All right, now we're gonna attach the event listener. So the first event listener would be the document on ready. Second one would be the listener for the age. So we have I'm just gonna try this off the top of my head and see if it works. Um, ID age field and then on input function show. Eligible accommodations. Let's try this out. Close things just clarity. Okay, so the first thing didn't fire. The document already didn't hide everything, so that's the first thing to test. Let's see if I've got some errors here. Ah oh, yeah, good. Overnight accommodations input is not defined. Okay. Oh, sorry. Uh, index line 240. Oh, okay. Yeah, here's the problem. You can just paste that, I suppose. Find that in apparent scope. I think it's kind of wrapped in those closures and it's immutable at that point. I don't know. I don't know enough about the nuances of it. Let's refresh. Dollar sign is not defined. Okay. So this could be the ordering of the template. Let me double check. That in my base template, I'm not including J jQuery before this uh, code is invoked. So let's check that. 
you can see here I've got a block here for extra JS and it's above my other JavaScript imports including and I have this static approach which I might just do it at some point but for right now this is good so this extra JS uh, is where I can bring in extra JavaScript on a per template basis so we're good to go there now the things should load and here's job uh, jQuery where are you 3.3.1 all right, age is not defined. All right, did I not? Did I miss the the var age? Hmm, I didn't grab it inside here. Okay, so it's even though. Yeah, I, I don't don't need to grab it in the parent scope now that I think about it. It's fine here. Although, I'm getting it from this event. That's interesting. Okay, how do I pass in arguments to the filter function? Hmm. Maybe on first run it's not defined. Also, I gotta figure out why my elements aren't hiding when the page renders. Oh, damn. There we go. Okay, and it hid everything. This is good. Ah, the parent didn't hide though. I should actually hide the whole dang field. Come on. Where are we at? So I have to select a sibling. There's no ID here to select. Dude, this is actually going to be more of a headache than I was expecting. I'll figure that part out in a minute. Man. 
need to pass in that age, so that's still a problem, isn't it? Right. I have a filter function and pass in arguments to see if we can do that. Let's just see if perhaps this event is not structured how I'm expecting. It says that if it's in the parent scope right before you the filter function it should be available that's my understanding of how javascript scope works but well, it need to be corrected i don't So we've got age here. And I'm trying to filter the eligible accommodations by calling in the function that I defined above here, which now should receive the scope from the calling enclosure should have available the parent scope from what I understand. It's confusing. Anybody know much more about JavaScript scope than I do? Hmm. It would be nice to be able to explicitly call, uh, pass those into the filter. Hmm. The other way around it is just to get the value. Well, it's kind of kludgy, but something like that. 
It's just right here. It's kind of strange. Fiber. Why? Why do you not? I see. Why do you not need to define the age variable in a combination is eligible function? Yes, that's a good question, Pro High Fiber, and that's uh, why I'm now defining it here. But from what I was gathering, um, the function should have access to the parent scope. That's my guess. I, if I have the age defined here, my assumption was that this age element would be available inside of the call to the accommodation is eligible function. But again, I'm not really deeply versed in JavaScript or JavaScript scope or anything like that. So I probably have to move it in here, grab the value. What's your thought on that? Okay, so undefined there. See if we're getting targeting the right uh, element there. Mm. Yeah, ID underscore age. Oh. I think it's Val. There we go. Now I think we got some stuff going on. accommodations each time. Yeah, it's very imperative code, yeah. Pro High Fiber says, I thought it would work inside the accommodation is eligible, but I'm probably wrong. Not well versed. Yeah, it will work there. I can grab it here, apparently. Uh, I was just hoping to pass it in from the event because the event has the target and the value of the target, but meh. I don't know. It's okie dokie. I think we're good to go though now. If I, so I put age of three. Oh goodness. Thirty-three. Something is happening, but. Uh, one, two, three, it's not what I expect. <laughs> ah, and then I have to, I have to parse int. That's the problem. So if I have a three-year-old attending the event, ooh, still not work on. <laughs> Pro i fiber, what uh, what do you usually work with? What kind of languages or technologies? Three, thirty-three. Those, those seem to be working now. Okay. So we hide everything. This is just more hassle than I was, I was hoping for, man. Dang it. Why should I have to parse, parse that age to an integer when it's on a, a dang numeric field? I shouldn't have to do that. It's a string.
I use just plain top value, that should work. Fiber says Python here and there are some Ruby random projects with both and some Raspberry Pi stuff I've been working a bit with HTML and JavaScript but not enough to have a leg to stand on still treating it as a string that's just weird man it's a numeric field right there I stopped to parse it to an integer okay jQuery approach is a little bit more concise. And of course this is going to work. says I'm more into networks but I'm forcing myself to learn programming languages or at least better understand them sounds good I actually started off doing a lot of network related stuff too and uh, an internship I did around eight years ago uh, started about about ten years ago at this school we set up a campus-wide wireless network and uh, before that I was working at a uh, an ISP in Lawrence Kansas and started actually doing a little bit of programming for them as well called Lawrence Freenet. It was a uh, sort of community. Uh, the idea was that it was um, a, not municipal, but like a community-oriented uh, wireless network. It's kind of got a strange, uh, well, strange history. But in any case, yeah. Started uh, network stuff a little bit and made my way over into programming. Now I do a lot of data analysis. And, um, well, I got a couple, I got a, been working on open, a few open source projects and one that's in production with a few, uh, I think several hundred users, so nothing big, nothing you know, huge, but that's okay. All right, so it looks like we've got, got to figure out now why this person is, my Boolean is probably, oh, well, yeah, here's the problem. I changed the wrong. And young enough. And this should be equals. Old enough and young enough because they need to be both. <laughs> old enough and young enough to, f to it's probably a better way of wording this whoa dang ah come on all right so if the person is old enough and young enough for a particular um, program that program should be showing up for them let's try it out now and a three-year-old can camp or be in a dorm might need to add semi-private. 33 year old, camp dorm is semi-private. Brilliant, it's working. Hayes Anderson, greetings, long time. Don't expect you to remember me. I have a hazy recollection. I've <laughs> I recognize the name. <laughs> I've also been AFK, so to speak, for a while, or off stream at least. I've been working on this project a bit, and over the holidays I didn't do a lot of streaming. But yeah, how's things? What are you up to? This 2020. So yeah, this is a good actual, I don't know if it's stopping point, what are we at, one and a half hours in? <laughs> Hayes Anderson says, touche. 
decent. I got a job. Oh, I remember. Were you doing boot camp, right? Is that my, now is my recollection clearing up? Coming up on the third week. Okay, very cool. What kind of, a, what kind of work are you doing? What kind of job is it? I should probably commit these changes soon. So I fixed the server code, that I'll commit. Hayes Anderson says, I was burnt out and getting back on track. I took time off last year and self-learned electrical engineering. Okay, cool. Yeah, burnout's, burnout's real. I mean, it's pretty bad. It starts taking over your life and you just feel stressed and have sleep problems. Perl developer, kind of dead language now. Yeah. Okay, we were talking about Perl 6, weren't we? <laughs> with, with John, I think. John was hanging out during that session. All right, let me just get these commits in there. So fix the primary key. Use correct. That was a bug. <clears throat> Excuse me. I'll put my extra JS after the imports that are relying on it. And in here, there's registration page JS is working now. Ish. Uh, it's pretty good. Probably needs a little bit of loving. I mean, it's not that many lines of JavaScript, to be honest. So. Probably don't have to worry about it too much. I just wish I could get this age ver ver uh, value in the event handler and pass it in there because it's just not working that way. And actually, let me think here for a second. No, no, this is fine. Paul's model. <laughs> what are you working on? I am working on an event registration <laughs> uh, system. It's actually pretty cool, man. Uh, we're hoping that we're going to have online payments and all this good stuff. Uh, this is the registration form as people would see it. And when they put in there right now, I'm just saying if you're a 12 year old, you're only available, for, uh, eligible for these accommodations that are uh, catered to six to 12 year olds. If you're a 22 year old, then you can camp or stay in a dorm or semi-private and if you're 33 year old then you have these el eligible accommodations and on the back end is where the complexity is uh, we have different accommodation types we have a fee structure based on the accommodation type and age range uh, whether or not you've checked a few days or if you're going to stay for the whole duration of the event it's a week-long event we have the ability to display your large chunks of error text. And I'll figure that out in a minute, but essentially to, <laughs> to view and export all of the accommodations. So you can manage, uh, not accommodations, registrants. You can manage all the registrations for the event. You can filter them down, see how many children you have for the children's programs, how many young adults you have for the young adults programs, all sorts of stuff. You can find out what types of food people need, if they're vegetarian, uh, if they need gluten-free. <laughs> that error was a feature, yes, look at that. Beautiful feature. Value error. I think this is Wagtail trying to render the table. I can take a look at this and fix it. Let me just... Get the yellow text off the screen for a second and um, review my JavaScript. 
So this is mainly written in Python and Django, and I'm really trying to keep it to a minimum static HTML server rendered and sprinkle in some JavaScript for dynamic, uh, in, uh, what do they call that, progressive enhancement type of things. Uh, yeah, I'm not going to go the whole um, front end, uh, back end separate route using Webpack or React or Vue or Angular or any of that. I just so basic it's just a form with a couple dynamic elements um, i was hoping to do a little bit more declarative coding like the view or the react style sort of where you declaratively um, indicate your data dependencies and things will change when the dependencies change but i just came around and said hey jquery's been around for 14 years um, it's a little bit imperative uh, yeah, but I might as well learn it and use it. It's good. So that's where we're, where we're at. Keep it simple, nothing too flashy. So 20 to 50, you know, about 30 lines of JavaScript is all we've got so far. I think this whole thing for the, all the dynamics of the form probably will be closer to 60 to 100 lines of, job, of imperative JavaScript. So not the most elegant and exciting code in the world, but I will do my best to make it readable. Cool. Paul's modeling company, or I'll just call you Paul. Twitter Bootstrap says Hayes Anderson. Hey, I'm using Twitter Bootstrap, Hayes Anderson. Look at this. Up front, Twitter Bootstrap. Oh, and you reminded me, actually, I should uh, run this through Crispy Forms. Let's do that. Gonna add a nice little package to the project. Boom. Hmm. Plural. Hmm. The CSS is just too nice. Uh, Django dash crispy dash forms. Boom. Hmm, it's already present. Oh, this whole time I could have been using it. Crispy. Crispy. P. Why? Crispy forms is gonna <laughs> make it look a little bit more crispy. Uh, it should add uh, bootstrap classes now. Let's take a look. Refresh. Ooh, I'm not, my server's not running. Refresh. Beautiful error text. To load the crispy tags. Here it is. There we go. Hmm. Actually, it didn't turn out to as an improvement, to be honest. This is a lot worse, in fact. And it's not hiding the dang things. Oh, man. But let me see something here, actually. Ooh, I have a div to target now. So that is an improvement. Yes, indeed. Form controls. So I just got to change my uh, selectors now. Yeah, Chris, we got burnt hierarchy change that did it. Took all my code, <laughs> my brittle, brittle code. 
All right, so now I have to target these index, but actually I think uh, it's gonna be give me a little bit better semantics. For example, on hiding the whole thing, I can just hide this. Div ID accommodation options. So let's, let's do that. Good thing I discovered this right away. Was a name. The selector is name. How do you do? Where's that ID? That's an ID. Okay, good. I'm getting at the end of my day. But if I refresh this, at least the um, hmm. the div will hide. So that's good sign. So uh, you're doing electrical engineering now. Wait a minute, let me scroll back up. Twitter bootstrap, otherwise I try to do, keep JavaScript free, to be honest. Yeah, I've been trying to keep JavaScript free as well. <laughs> Making fun of my own self, I'm not from New, New York. Uh, but I don't really dislike JavaScript. Not the strongest. Okay, so that hit, that was correct. That's correct. Crispy, man. Now I'm going to have to work through all my form fields again. Hmm. Frankly, I, I think I'm just going to need to write this HTML. We'll, we'll, we'll see. Yeah, because I'm writing some brittle JS, and if I rewrite the HTML, if I change the way Crispy generates the forms, uh, I'm going to have to rewrite my JavaScript again. Anyway, Crispy got burned. Okay, then, so what we'll do is when we show eligible accommodations, Frankly, this, this whole function is just redundant. So there we go, it's, it's <laughs> verbose, it's imperative. And I'm just getting a little bit confused.
I think it can live in here. That's fine. I can figure out where it should go. I'm doing a little bit more in this function than I would like to, but it's, it's hogging visibility. So there it is. There it is. Indeed. So when the document is ready, we'll hide uh, the accommodations option that's no longer a method. No longer a function. So, all right. there we go. So now it's working. It's showing the accommodation options, and now I'm just going to filter, fix my filter function. We should be good to go. So eligible accommodations can no longer use this selector. Firstly, I think the selector is going to be something simpler now. They all just have a class, well, a name, that's fine here. I think the selector then for name is something like this. Remember. Let's check the console, see if we got errors. Age is not defined. Oh, okay, well, it's a little bit better. Mm, yeah, the age field also changed. Let's back to that. Name is age. Well, there it is. ID is ID age. Ah, okay. Now I renamed the variable. I just forgot to replace it in all the places. There we are. All right. Getting close to having things working again. And I'm not totally sold on this crispy form as an improvement, though. That's the problem. Mm, it is, it is. I like having the overnight accommodations all bundled into one grouping. See what this returns. Yeah, sixteen of them.
Everything's false. Hey, Dr. Unafraid, welcome. Good to see you. Haven't seen you around in a while. I'm scratching my head over some JavaScript. I just had it working a couple minutes ago and then I broke it. I would like to move beyond this. <laughs> All right, so everything's false. That's a good start. The value looks correct and I can, I can check the type of. At this point, I should probably be using a debugger, right? If I was actually a wise guy, who is it that always was having me do the debugger? Level two, I'm using a debugger. Like a proper developer. Here we go. There's my debugger. So I've got some locals. Age minimum, ah, uh -huh. and age maximum are undefined. Okay. So, where's my attributes? How do I check the attributes exist? Stuff's not alphabetized. Data set. No. There they are, attributes. doesn't seem to have my uh, data attributes. Okay. So when I use the crispy form, that's right. It totally borked my, my data attributes. So I can't use crispy. Now I know. Makes sense though. Cause with crispy forms, you're handing off the, the form rendering to from Django to a, a, a downstream library. Hmm. Hmm. Well, so it goes. I'll just reset that to head and call it good. <laughs> So I just need to figure out how to hide that in the beginning, but that's okay. Now my stuff is not working. Ooh, man, I thought I had committed that initial working code. Well, I think I got to call it good for tonight. We're at two hours and that's what I kind of set out to do is about two hours of this um, JavaScript work. But I got accomplished what I set out to do. That's good, that's a good feeling. Not leaving off with too much overhead, too much uh, lingering uh, that might you know keep you up or something. That's part of the burnout. And I think Hayes, you were probably feeling that a while back. So fortunately I'm pretty, not right now anywhere near burnout, but you know what I'm saying? the. Uh, the stuff stays with you. It, you can't just like leave work and then all your work's behind you for the night. It's, uh, so when I have a live code session and things aren't working, I have to leave off with the things in a broken state. It bothers me a bit. 
That said, good progress today. We're gonna continue working on the dynamic aspects of this form probably on Tuesday. Um, I've got two projects I need to have short-ish deadlines within the next couple of months, uh, one to two months for each of them. This project we need to have done by April. And the Western Friend project, we'd really like to launch it just uh, soon, like within a month. Uh, but it's also probably has a deadline of around April. So when we come back on this project, I'll be hiding the entire overnight accommodations until somebody selects uh, that they need overnight accommodations. We'll be changing this field to be a radio select with three options, um, whether or not they're, uh, they'll either need overnight accommodations, they'll either be a day attender, or they'll just be attending the memorial meeting, which is a uh, one-day event for a couple of hours. Based on the choice there, they'll either see days attending or days attending and overnight accommodations. So those will need to be dynamically um, displayed. I'll probably just need to write this HTML by hand in a little bit. It's not a big deal, I can loop over it. That should be fine, in fact. Looping over it, they won't necessarily be writing it by hand though, will it? I'll come back to that later. Um, and then the final thing, more or less, we'll be adding more fields of just information that we like to collect from the registrants. Um, but these fields, they affect price, and we'll need a way to dynamically calculate the price and maybe display it in the front end. And that might involve an AJAX call, for example, to an, an endpoint. I'd like to keep the um, pricing logic defined in one place, so I'm not duplicating it on the client and the server. That said, thanks uh, for everybody for stopping by. It's been nice to chat. Good to see a good seeing a few uh, familiar faces. Dr. Underfraid, hello. Hayes Anderson, good to hear that you've got a, a new job and that you're kind of recovered from your burnout. Paul's Modeling Company, nice to meet you and uh, hope to see you around the, the chat. Pro High Fiverr, I appreciate your, your help on a couple of the JavaScript um, things. Uh, some suggestions you made. Adrenaline 681, also thank you for your help on the event listeners. Uh, help me get over the hump there, especially by recommending I use the input event listener for the age changes rather than the change or the key up event listeners which both had shortcomings level two good to see you again Ho i know you're afk hope your projects go well all right i think that's everybody who participated today this again is a code buddies live coding session if you'd like to participate in more of these types of events host your own events of course uh, you're free to stream on Twitch, but Code Buddies is also a really great community of learners. We're helping each other along the way. Everybody's a, both a teacher and a learner in this community. And if you're wanting to get involved in an open source project, github.com slash codebuddies. We're rewriting the codebuddies.org platform. It's fully open source, written with Python and Django. I believe there's going to be a React front end, so if you're a JavaScript developer, you could get it. Uh, some more experience or help along an open source project with your React skills. Great. Well, thanks again for hanging out and have a great day.